Welcome to another episode of Integrity Matters by Turnitin and today I'm very pleased to be joined with Phil Dawson and Wendy Sutherland-Smith from Deakin University and we're going to chat about academic integrity, about contract cheating and they've recently done a study uh, around contract cheating technology and we'll hear more about that. So my first question, uh, let's start with you Wendy, is you've been involved with academic integrity for quite some time now. Um, how did you, um, what's the background, how did you first get interested in the topic and, and you know, what really uh, piqued your interest in that? As you say, I've been involved in academic integrity for over 20 years now, you know, probably closer to 30. But uh, I first became interested because I was on um, an academic integrity panel which was hearing allegations of plagiarism at that stage in a faculty of business and law. And I wondered why it was that international students seemed to appear before the hearings more than domestic students and I wondered was there something around issues of plagiarism. So I did a PhD in looking at plagiarism in the internet, uh, cut and paste plagiarism we'd call it now, and um, international students. And I can certainly say from my research and following research that uh, you know there is no indication that international students do plagiarise more than local students. Um, but the follow-up question is, do they get caught more? Mm, um, so um, I've been involved in plagiarism, collusion and most recently contract cheating for um, a number of years and uh, have always been on academic integrity panels and you know doing research in the area of uh, integrity and trying to make it, I think, fairer and uh, easier for students to understand what the right thing to do is. And Phil, what was, what's your background? So, I guess I haven't come straight to academic integrity. I, I'm an educational assessment researcher, so I'm, I'm interested in how do we make really great assessment that's really great for learning. Uh, and I guess my research centre in the wake of the My Master scandal and all those sorts of things, we were asked to look into contract cheating as a problem. So I reached out to Wendy, who I knew was a, a big name in the area, and we cooked up some projects to work together. Which has been great. And so moving then on, I guess, uh, related to what you're saying, Phil, contract cheating itself, you said you started with copy-paste plagiarism, and then um, over the recent, more recent years, contract cheating's become I don't know if more of an issue, I um, don't know if you feel it's more of an issue, but certainly um, it's been a hot topic in education for sure. Uh, for those who don't know who might be watching, can you just give a brief overview of, of contract cheating? Yeah, look, um, contract cheating is where students basically outsource uh, their work and a third party does it and they get it and submit it as their own. Um, uh, some places would say money needs to change hands, other places would say it doesn't. Uh, certainly at our university money does not need to change hands, so you don't need to buy a product. Uh, it could be family and friends who engage in doing the work for the student, but the student takes it and submits it as their own is the key. Um, so yeah, that's sort of where we stand in terms of, of mm -hmm. how we see contract cheating. And how much of a problem do you think it is, Phil? What's, what, what have you seen in your research? Yeah, so look, some of the research on prevalence of contract cheating, uh, there have been some very large surveys that have been done. The numbers seem to be on the low end, say 2% of students admitting to having done it at some stage. And then there are, there are larger numbers as well, but I guess I have less confidence in some of those higher estimates. I've seen them as high as sort of 15% or something. I think it's probably closer to the 2%. Okay. And then in terms of how we, or how you've been trying to prevent it, I guess there's two sides, um, which are connected as well, one being education and one being more focusing on detection. Um, Wendy, do you want to talk a little bit about the importance you see of education in this and any steps that you've taken at Deakin around that? Yeah. Look, I, I think, um, just to clarify, I don't think we can prevent contract cheating. I think, I mean, all the work that's been done over decades now has not prevented plagiarism. As the chair of a faculty disciplinary committee, I still see that the biggest issue in our faculty is still 
plagiarism at 83% um, of, of all the cases we hear. So we can't prevent this, but what we can do is be better at educating and better at detecting and better at deterring. I think we need all three arms of those things. Um, I, would, I would like to put a heavy emphasis on education because I think uh, certainly in the work that we've done, but also in the cases that I see come before me, a lot of it is around complete unawareness, unawareness of policies, unawareness of seriousness of issues, unawareness of contract cheating itself. Um, so it's awareness not for the, not only for the students but for the staff as well. So I think there's a heavy emphasis on education needed. But that is not to say we don't need to put eggs in the basket for detection and deterrence. We do, we need to show students and staff this is a serious issue. We need to show staff that they do have to look out for this, that we do take it seriously when they detect it. What do we do with it as an institution? Um, and Deakin's put a number of strategies um, around place. I mean, most universities have. In the wake, as Phil mentioned, of my master, I mean, that was a scandal that rocked Australia. And every university just went scurrying to look at their policies and say, look, do we have something called contract cheating in our policy? Um, most universities, of course, didn't. So that was the first step, recognising it in policy and then process. Um, and then many, many uh, universities have done a lot of work with student unions in particular to raise awareness for students. Um, certainly the work Phil and I have done around making markers aware at the point of marking around uh, looking for contract cheating. Um, a lot of universities are doing a lot of work in this space. Um, there's always room for more mm -hmm. and certainly uh, you know, room for uh, technological um, assistance in that area as well. Phil, anything you'd like to add to that? Oh, look, just that I really echo what Wendy's saying about the importance of detection and deterrence uh, and you know, education and all of that. There's, there's been sort of a, almost a false dichotomy drawn up by uh, some people as if you can only educate and educating is the anathema of uh, detection, but they, they have to work together. When I'm driving, I don't drink drive and I don't speed. And I would like to tell you that I don't drink drive and I don't speed for purely moral virtuous reasons or because I'm so educated into the dangers. But when you know there's random breath testing and when you know that there's speed cameras, those do have an effect on you. So I think both of them are so important. We've done some research into how well can people detect contract cheating. So if we give markers, the people who would be seeing student assignments a lot, uh, if we give them these assignments, do they spot it? And I think probably one of the most interesting results that we've had is that if you give them assignments and you ask them to spot it, they can spot it fairly often. Uh, but there's some other research where people have been given assignments and not asked to spot contract cheating. So they've been given a bunch of contract cheated assignments and just said, mark these. No one spots the contract cheating. Yeah, so very I interesting. Yeah, I think that awareness mm. and just thinking detection is a really powerful thing. That's it for part one. Uh, in part two, we'll delve more into the actual study itself and hear uh, Phil and Wendy's thoughts on the future as well.